Greetings and welcome to the Wealth For Real YouTube channel. I'm your host, Christopher Anastasio. It is Friday, November 3rd, 2023. And I wanted to talk to you guys in this video today about where I'm putting cash that I'm not ready to do something with, but need some yield in these high inflationary times. Uh, so I'm gonna kind of keep it brief, guys. I wanna just breeze over the three stage places that I'm putting the cash and tell you kind of why why those three and what the difference is to me in terms of accepting the difference in yield between them and things like that. Uh, and whether I have it there today or I'm planning to put it there, I wanted to show you these three options that I've, that I've kind of been going over and stuff like that or dealing with so far. So the very first one, guys, just getting right to the chase. Uh, once the shock of inflation set in throughout 2022 uh, and I realized, okay, the, the, you know, I have this cash set aside. I'm not ready to do something with it yet. Not necessarily ready to put it as a down payment on a home or buy rental properties or anything. I'm just, I'm just kind of hoarding it for now. And it's, and it's deteriorating due to inflation. What can I do with it? Um, in 2023, as I started really kind of looking at like, what can I do? You know, it took me like all of 22 and part of 23 to get to the point of action. Can't really forgive myself for that, but you know, it is what it is. Uh, came across and shout out to Jason, came across Marcus by Goldman Sachs, high yield savings, at the time, I think it was like 5.15% introductory rate that fell to 4.15 after 90 days, unless you could get people to sign up. Like you had a link, you could send it to people. If they signed up, um, you know, then then you would get another 90 days or something like that. But no matter what, the 515 or the 415, way better than the USAA um, interest rate that I had at, you know, I don't even know what it was, like maybe one to 2%, I mean, maybe less, it was horrible. So I was like, I'm doing this. I'm moving in into uh, Marcus by Goldman. Got the referral link uh, from um, from my friend and opened the account fairly quickly. I mean, took action fairly quickly once I realized what Marcus was offering. Um, now the 5.15 percent has grown to 5.4 percent, which after the introductory period falls to 4.4 percent. You guys can see that over here in the sort of upper left area. So that's the rate that I'm at right now. My 4.4 percent about four times as much as what I had in USAA. I'm super happy with it, although I know there's other stuff out there, um, you know, maybe a little bit higher at another bank or this or that. I'm pretty well settled in with Marcus by Goldman for now as my high yield savings. Uh, keep a little bit of cash, just a tiny little bit in USAA for like hyper liquidity purposes. I mean, you can move money across your USA savings account accounts into your checking account in, in a fraction of a second and it'll show up obviously because it's all the same thing in USAA. Um, but, but it's a tiny, tiny percentage. And then the bulk of that savings has come over to Marcus by Goldman to capture this now 4.4%. So USAA savings moves, you know, at the blink of an eye. Marcus, when you move it back, if I have to move it back to USA to get it into my checking account and do something with it, um, it takes one to two business days, I've noticed. So it's not as hyper liquid as the USAA savings account. There's a little bit of a lag there. Um, so anyway, that's option one. The next option that I've recently kind of discovered and settled in with is in my Fidelity stock brokerage account. Apologize if you can't see my face in the corner here anymore, um, where, I've, where I've kind of have a modest bit of stock holdings now going uh, in terms of like getting dividend yield and going super boring and super value stocks that just pay me high dividends. Uh, what I've realized is that the Fidelity government money market fund or the SPACs account, as they call it, symbol-wise. Don't know why that's the symbol. Uh, you can see here, year-to-date, 3.94%, seven-day yield, 4.99%. This is, my understanding is, this is Fidelity buying, you know, government bonds with this cash that it's got on hand to keep it growing. And obviously, as, as, as short-term yields have fluctuated so much or moved around so much, uh, th this, these numbers are always changing. But this is an interesting option to the Marcus option because this means that I've got dry powder sitting in a stock brokerage account, ready to buy more assets, ready to buy more dividend yielding stocks. But when I'm not quite ready to buy, I can pick up these numbers right here, as you can see over here towards the, the middle left or upper left of the screen. Okay, uh, you know, 4%, 4.99%. You know, I think even for a little bit, this number was a little over 5%. Okay, so obviously at 499, I'm doing better than. Uh, Marcus at 4.4, uh, certainly, but there's a different purpose to this account, obviously. This keeps the money on deck 
to invest in stocks, to buy options, to hedge my portfolio and stuff like that. So, so this is, you know, obviously, you know, virtually no risk here. Uh, you can look at the year to date returns. I mean, it's kind of hilarious. I mean, under 1% at 10 years, one and a half, 1.7 at three years, and then jumps to four and a half in this year. That's called inflation, folks. That is inflation right there if you want a, a little snapshot of it. So anyway, so this is option two. And like I said, the bulk of the money is over here in Marcus, but there's this sliver of money now in the Fidelity SPACs getting ready to buy stocks, okay? The last one I wanna show you guys is through Yield Street. And this is something I just received from Yield Street, Yield Street yesterday. Let me, let me caveat this, guys. I've never used Yield Street before. I have not, I've not gone there with this yet. I don't know how good Yield Street is. I don't know how legitimate Yield Street is. I don't know if Yield Street's like FTX. I don't know if Yield Street's like something much safer than FTX. I have no idea. I've been toying with it for a few years now. I think I found it like in 2018, 19, 20, somewhere around there, and just never pulled the trigger. They're always doing interesting things to get yield uh, where you can invest in real estate projects, development projects, this project, that project, you know, and, and I mean, a lot of times it's locking your money up. It's like, hey, you're going to invest, you're going to put the money into something for, for six months or 12 months or 24 months, and you're expected to get this yield back. But again, these are special types of things. This is like people developing buildings and people investing in storage units and crazy stuff like that. I mean, way past the risk spectrum that you see here is my understanding uh, because it's it's not government bonds and it's not just cash getting interest. So obviously it's some amount of risk above and beyond those things. When I saw this email though yesterday, it really made my eyes pop, particularly because the six month and these nine month notes, 6% over six months, 6.5% over nine months, um, just really, really interesting. Obviously not enough information here, nowhere near enough to get me to do anything yet. Uh, earn monthly income at following competitive target net annualized yields, highest offered to date for short-term notes. So I got to I gotta look into this. I got I to gotta get into my Yield Street account, which I got to knock the dust off of that. I hadn't been in there in forever. Um, but absolutely want to check this out. Once I dig into this a little bit more, guys, I'm definitely going to... Um, to publish more content about it. But I just wanted everybody to be aware of A, Yield Street, if you weren't already. B, these interest rates right here on these short-term notes. Super, super intriguing. Lots more work to do to figure out if I wanna go this route or not, or if it's safe enough to go this route. But this would be kind of, as I, as I mentioned before, this progression, bulk of the savings in Marcus, 4.4%, super boring, super easy, one to two business days to get it out. A sliver over here in the Fidelity SPACs, enough to buy stocks with. Uh, you know, to dump into the stock account quickly. If I need this cash in SPACs, I got to pull that out, probably one to three business days. And then you got these short-term notes with Yield Street. My sense is, you know, obviously you go into something like this and you better better be able to do without the money for six to nine months. So totally different profile here on accessibility, totally different profile risk-wise, but super, super interesting yield-wise. And those are kind of my stair steps, guys. I mean, you know, USAA is like stair zero, Marcus Stair 1, SPAC Stair 2, and then potentially uh, short-term notes in something like Yield Street would be step three. So hope this was helpful to you guys. Uh, check it out when you get a chance. If anybody's doing this already or knows more about this, please you know, drop a comment, respond to this, whatever. I absolutely am coming in from, from the dark on this Yield Street short-term notes thing. So in the meantime, hope you guys have a great weekend or, ha or having a great weekend. And uh, thanks for uh, supporting the channel, checking in on the channel, and I will talk to you guys real soon. Uh, until next time. Thanks, guys.